Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dong. Today, uh, Nishon and I are going to talk about some of the updates we are doing in Docker 113 release. Um, you cannot do them now because the release is not out. We are still working on uh, some of the issues. So the, um, today, what I'm going to share is how you do service deployment uh, to not impact your availability. So if your requests keep coming in, then um, what would happen? So if you use uh, F5 or other hardware load balancer, you know that you need to set up a um, health check. The health check would flow the endpoints. If the endpoints are up, you, it adds to the load balancer. But what if you are upgrading that service endpoint, that service instance, you would actually lose some of the, um, uh, the requests because uh, help the, the load balancer would have to do like uh, three, three tries to say that to mark, uh, mark this as uh, down. So those are the things that you will see, oh, this affect my availability. But in Docker, what we are thinking would be uh, if we can channel all this uh, system together, we should be able to get a better result. Uh, that's a general idea. Um, let's look a little bit at the history. In Docker 110, we add a distributed DNS uh, into Docker Engine. Uh, that you are able to put some alias to your container so you can, you can look it up instead of uh, writing into the host file of your system. Uh, in Docker 111, we had a built-in load balancer. So our Blue Lib Network, it used IPVS uh, as the lower level uh, multiplexer. In Docker 112, we, in, uh, we do um, release uh, Docker Swarm mode. Uh, now you have service API. I'm going to go a little bit deeper uh, in the next slide. Since uh, Bill did a poll that not many people are using uh, Swarm mode. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. When you look at all this, the, the load balancer entry and the DNS entry, they are service records. What the problem we have uh, in up to now is um, a container is added to the load balancer and the DNS record when it starts. If the request uh, was sent, if the requests are sent through the load balancer, they would be routed to these new containers right away. The problem comes some containers take time to start. So you will see that the records are, uh, the containers are there and the load balancer records are, are there right away. But if the containers take 10 seconds to start, during that 10 seconds, whatever requests routed to those containers are lost. So that is basically the problem impacting availability you will see. The problem comes from two components. One is the container D that is uh, responsible for screening up the instance. And then the other part is the network. The network responsible for um, updating the service records. So in Docker 113, we are trying to several changes to connect these two components so that your request uh, would not be lost. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Docker Swarm mode. Mostly, you might already be, be familiar with that. Um, it's several. These are the parts that related to uh, the topic I'm going to like uh, our problem. The first part is clustering. So Swarm gives you the capability to organize a set of um, nodes, as Bill has shown, that into a cluster. Um, you can join the node uh, using the token. If you can use InfoKit, it can be streamlined. Uh, in the, and then the next part is about orchestration. Orchestration, the most important concept is service, kind of the service uh, architecture we are um, we are fitting into. A service represents uh, uh, a deployment unit in, into Swarm mode. It consists of multiple tasks. These tasks share the same task spec. So you can use Docker Swarm uh, API, uh, the um, command line, or the service API to create, update, remove your service. A task is the atomic, the basic unit of uh, Swarm uh, scheduling. So you can, uh, what Swarm tried to do is to put your task into a node in the scheduling. It tried to make 
uh, smart choices, including the case if you try to do topology aware, those are the things we have in plan, but you need the support from infrastructure like the labeling. Um, the third component related to our problem is networking. So in, inside the networking, you have service. Now, how do you want to say service A want to access service B, but don't want to be visible from service C? So you would actually create different networks and let them connect to each other through those networks. Um, how about you want this, your service to be publicly uh, available? In that, we use a publish port. That is a public access point from, for your service. All the nodes, uh, from all the nodes, if you are accessing that publish port, you can get to the, the service instances. So that is the, the building load balancer. So the request loss problem, as I said before, is come from um, the, the coordination between them. We, add, we create a container. At the same time, like creating a container, it would do several things. One is setting up uh, the container itself, adding this container into all the networks, also adding them into the load balancer. So all these things are done a couple together. So yes, it would work, but then, as I say, if, um, if um, your container take time to start, those requests would be lost. So in Docker 113, what we are trying to do is um, to decide when a container is ready. So to decide if a container is ready or not, we are using um, health check health check um, to, to indicate if a container is uh, healthy or unhealthy. So the basic idea is uh, to add the container into service record when it's healthy and remove it when it's not healthy. I keep saying service record because uh, here we want to cover both uh, low balance record and the DNS record. So health check is uh, the um, the feature we introduced in Docker 1.12. Um, the, the idea is uh, to have uh, some command that container D can run to probe the um, process and decide if uh, the, that process is uh, running as expected or not. So the mo one of the most basic form you can see on the right side is um, this is a Docker file. I added the health check. It has an interval, like how frequent you are probing. Uh, when you probe, what is the timeout? If there's no feedback, it's, it's timeout. And then how many times you check it before you give a verdict? So if it's missed one, you may say it's okay. There might be some glitch in somewhere. You don't really, really very sure. So you can give it a try like a few times. Uh, with that, you, you give it a command. What kind of command it should run, uh, Docker, Docker D, uh, Docker D, uh, container D should run to decide uh, if it is healthy or not. Here, uh, we are trying to access um, HTTP endpoint. If, the, if, if uh, the output, like, it's good, so it would exit with zero. Zero means it's healthy. Otherwise, it exit with uh, one. It means unhealthy. So in this, um, uh, we are going to use a simple web uh, image. In this image, I would just add a slip five seconds before we start the, the, the web page. So it's to simulate that it take time to initialize your container. Um, so in Docker 113, we will use uh, the health check as indication uh, to update the service record. Um, Docker 113 also would have the CLI allow you to um, set the health check at the service. So when you say, uh, I want to create a service, uh, you have the option say, what kind of health check I want to implement. It's on the command line, just like in Docker run. Now you, have, you can override what the health check should be in the image. So the next component uh, we take a look is the, the load balancer. Um, the, the DNS is uh, similar, so I'm going to talk about the load balancer. In 
um, as I say, in Docker One Tail, the container create and add to load balancer is one operation. They are coupled together. In Docker One Thirteen, what we are doing is to uh, separate them to have a uh, enable service uh, primitive. Enable service, if you set the parameter to true, it would enable that container, add that container into service record. If, if it is false, it will remove it from the service record. Um, this is the model of the load balancer. In the load balancer, it's, um, um, it ha each, each worker node has um, IPVS, has uh, ingress uh, sandbox, Inside the sandbox, it has the IPVS module. Uh, so when we are seeing a load balancer, it's actually a distributed load balancer. So on every node, they have the same um, multiplexer, the IPVS records. Um, so when you have uh, the container D, say this container is uh, healthy, you would actually push it into um, a network uh, DB and that get propagated to every node through a gossip protocol, and they would be updated everywhere. Um, so there, there's some implication about that, how, how soon those can be propagated. That is actually a problem, uh, but we, if you go into some details, we can see how we are going to address that problem. So for example, if when you are trying to um, take down a container, you would actually tell the container, uh, you, would, should, you should take it out of the load balancer first and then shut it down. But when you try to shut down the container, you are not shutting down right away. You should actually give it some time so that it can finish all the existing requests before it exit. So here you also see the trend that you should, the, the operation of removing it from container, from the load balancer and the operation of really shutting down the container should be two operation and they should have the correct sequence to coordinate them. Um, that's what I talk a little bit. So this take an example of updating an image. Um, when we want to update an image, we, we use a service update command the service update command uh, say, I want to update the image from version one to version two. The orchestrator would get a notification of uh, a service uh, change uh, event. In that event, it would be able to find out that the image has been uh, changed. So the orchestrator is responsible for driving your service from a current state to a desired state. In this case, it would collect all the tasks from the service, and then it would take the task out, take some of the task out. Um, let's say how many tasks it would take, it depends on a parameter called update parallelism, like how, how many concurrency you allow it to do. Um, let's say it takes some task out, and then it would first remove them from load balancer. Next, it would send uh, a stop container to container D. When, when you receive the stop container, uh, the container D would send a sick term, try to shut down the container. Uh, but after 10 seconds, it would send a sick queue, actually removing it. So during that time, the container can continue to serve uh, the existing request, but it would not receive new requests. After the container is stopped, um, the agent would start a new container. It start a new container, but remember here, it's not under the load balancer. Uh, it start a new container, and when the new container start, the health check will kick in. The health check, it take whatever time it needs to clear the container. So when it says it's healthy, then the container started message go back to the agent. When uh, when that happened, the agent would say, okay, it's already healthy. I'm going to add it to the load balancer. So with this sequence, you can, um, <coughs> you can see that the, the normal request would, would be okay. There would be cases, okay, how about the existing request take an hour to finish? Yeah, that would be a problem. 
like because you and then you basically saying that all this need extra coordination. Can we do some parameters saying saying that okay um, between like a stop container I can hold it for very long, not exiting. There's ways you can do you can go around that, but but we are not going to talk about that here. Uh, let's assume your requests are short lived requests. So that would be the sequence that if you can go through it like that, it would not uh, lose your request or would not degrade your availability. Um, so this is uh, the, about, about the issue we are talking about. Uh, Nishan is going to do a demo. Thanks, thanks, Don. Um, so I'm just going to briefly demonstrate uh, service updates and the load balancer, basically stuff that Dong just talked about. Um, and we'll, we'll try to just see how requests passed on to different tasks of the service are not lo lost when the service is updating and new containers are taking time to start. So uh, is everyone able to see this or should I increase the size? Uh, is this good? All right, so this is um, a Docker Swarm mode uh, cluster we have running here. Um, see that it has uh, three nodes. Uh, it's running on AWS and the only thing it's running right now is this one service called test, um, and it's running this uh, uh, container um, from this image called Simple Web, which just is a simple web server that returns responses um, indicating uh, the IP address of the container that was hit and the count of the request and some other data like that. Um, so. What we're going to do is we're going to start sending requests to it, and we have a visualization on the side that kind of shows uh, for each container IP address how many requests uh, have been served by that container. So, Right, so uh, we just have a startup script that um, keeps sending requests every two seconds to uh, to this uh, service. And right now you see that we have only this one uh, rep one task for this service, one replica. So we start sending requests, and hopefully this visualization should. some stale data from a previous test. Uh, let me just... Okay, so the previous task that was running uh, took some time to shut down. And have a one, version one running.
since the demo seems to be stuck. Um, just gonna check. Yeah, so it seems like um, with the demo, um, just If not, um, just have to. Okay, so this was working like an hour ago. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, so what we're going to do is uh, we'll just see what happens in the terminal. So um, Started working now. Okay. All right. So, okay, cool. It's working. I don't know what happened there. Um, but, so as you can see, there is this um, one container which is running on IP address 10.255.0.6, and the number in front of that, are you all able to see that? Or is it too small? Yeah, so 66, 67, 68, it's also growing, so it's going out. But basically what that means is that each single request that's being sent to that container is being served uh, by that container and the count displays uh, the number of requests served so far. So this is great, but not very interesting. Um, what we'd like to do is we'd like to now scale up the service to have more instances. So we're gonna say Docker service scale, um, test equals three. So what this command will do is create three instances of the service. So if you see here, um, it's starting two new instances. And in our realization, yeah, so you see that this new, these two new services have now, uh, instances have now started and Requests are being round robin between each of the three. So I'm gonna just zoom out a bit so you can see. Um, so you see the top one gets serves a request and then the middle one, and then uh, it just refreshes, and then the bottom one. And then, yeah, so the top one again, and the middle one, um, and then the bottom one. So it's, yeah, it's basically just a simple bar graph of, um, uh, the number of requests served by each container. Um, all right, so this seems to be working and we can uh, scale up the service to five and it's still gonna work. Um, so this is just sort of demonstrating how the load balancer actually works. Um, you can see also that when I scaled up to five, these services, these tasks actually take time to start up. So you don't see new tasks on this visualization until the tasks have actually started, which alludes to what Dong was talking about, um, is that until the health check actually indicates that a task is ready, requests are not sent to it, um, which means that requests won't get lost. Now, what we'll do is we'll update this service. So we have a version two of this service um, a Docker service update. So we we want to update this service to version 2.0 and then test. Um, right. So now what should happen is New tasks should be created and old tasks should be shut down. The new tasks uh, will be displayed as red uh, just to indicate a new version. And we'll see that slowly requests are split between the new version and the old version. And eventually the old, um, old version tasks are just uh, taken away. So, 
right? So over over here you can see that now we have this one um, instance in the red uh, that's already serving requests. Um, you'll you'll still see the old ones for a while. Uh, they might get replaced, as in their IP address might might get reused, and a new task might start there. So the one in the middle actually got replaced. So now we have two instances of um, version two, and this will keep happening until all tasks are replaced, uh, and we have five tasks of um, uh, of the new version. So you can just wait up and see um, that happening. Now we have three tasks um, with the. And here, if you see, um, tasks. it's too hard to display both. Um, you can still see that some of the blue ones are actually serving requests, and requests are still being round robin um, correctly between the new and the old live tasks, um, and. Until the new task starts and it gets healthy, uh, requests won't be sent to it. So if you see the sync sync up between um, requests here and then the requests being served here, uh, new uh, starting tasks don't actually miss um, any of the. All right. So now we have five new tasks, and uh, you can see that the one at the top, the blue one, is not serving anything anymore and a service has been successfully updated and all requests are now being served by only by the new tasks. So that's all we had. This is a pretty um, like simple straightforward demo just to sort of show um, like as as a picture what Dong uh, presented earlier. Um, and if you all have any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Hi. So the demonstration was pretty easy. You're right now just doing a GET request on your local web server, localhost 80, 8000, 80, whatever. Um, session where? So because I, I, you mentioned that play in. Uh, New version. Uh, I, it's very important that you're you're just doing a, a dumb round round of rod default F5 load balancer. Uh, I'm hoping you're session aware. Is what I'm asking is, are you session aware, or uh, or are you just taking each request unique as you are in your demonstration here with a curl command? Uh, it's TCP section aware, oh, okay. but it's not sticking itself. If you have multiple section, you want to you want it to be bundled together. Yeah, I just want one instance to be taking care of the the one session, yep. and that will do that. It's it's done by the IPS IPVS. Uh, it it would actually take it take each one as a section and and make it routes uh, all the time. So even I even even you remove that instance from IPVS record, that section would continue to go apart. So you see that the, the yeah. control plane is gone, but the data plane can still uh, continue to work. Right, and but I also had another concern. That you're, you had a health check that was a curl command, uh, uh, curl dash f. Uh, I've, I've been bitten by that health check uh, of that, where it appears to be east chin would be with an H. You're saying that the, um, the basically the curl command the curl would hang waiting for to establish. I mean the link would be established, would never respond. Uh, that kind of the thing, uh, the the it, it doesn't exit with zero. So in that case, uh, that container would not be healthy. But you are saying that it would call, it would basically kill all your instance. That's possible. Curl would run. Uh, I think the time the heart the 120 seconds. I think, but point would be your three one yeah count the three so you're back to that 
nine, 10 second uh, health awareness. That's true. But here, you, if you think about it is, um, um, okay, uh, there are two cases. One is uh, going, going up, you are adding a new instance. It doesn't really matter how long it takes you to ramp up. Right? You are not losing requests in this sense. The other part is um, we definitely want health check to be lightweight, reliable, of course. So that if it's really bad, you can detect it right away. So that is really important. Um, that part, we, yes, we, we try to say that if you can have other way specific to your application and reliable, that's best. So I am not expert in code, so I don't know. But the idea here is you can actually increase the frequency of uh, check. Um, that might help and have a more simple way uh, to check instead of something may have some percentage of failure. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for the talk first. So it's pretty cool to see how it works. And, it's, but maybe it's a stupid question, but question, but Imagining in case of, you know, a heavy service, something that consumes a lot of memory, CPU, this kind of thing. Uh, this process, for, ex for example, to change a version of the service, it's something that, uh, it's a synchronous, synchronous, you know, uh, how it should, should happen in case of, you know, something that should happen asynchronous or yeah, this example, and he changed the version of service, you know, mm -hmm. and you will see the service being replaced. How, how heavy the, the, the service, the load, you know. Uh, right, okay, so um, if I understand your question correctly, you're asking um, how are these task up, service updates, uh, tasks being replaced by new versions happening? Um, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, right? So uh, I guess I skipped over that bit. So what I showed was essentially a rolling update. Um, and a rolling update means that you replace a small part of your service uh, followed by a small part and keep doing this till the entire service is replaced. Um, in the case of this service, um, Just show you the uh, spec. So here you can see that there's an update config. So what this is saying is that parallelism one and delay five seconds, which means when, when you trigger an update, replace one task at a time, uh, wait for five seconds, and then replace the next. So it's synchronized by these specifications. Um, yeah, and that's the update config. There's more stuff like what you can do on failure if an update fails, if new tasks fail, there's more things you can specify, but there's a very tight specification that um, guides how an update works. Right, I know, know you said you wanted the health check to be lightweight and, uh, you know, with quick response, but is that command, is that customizable, scriptable, change that, is it, how many cut, uh, commands are available, limitation there? So the, um, here, the, the command actually is from, it's run in your container. So it's uh, Docker EXEC for now. Yeah, yeah. It, it depends on your image, what, what kind of thing you have. Um, do you guys plan on supporting additional exit codes? Because uh, obviously, like, it's very simple. This, but you mentioned long-running processes, sessions, things like that. Is that something that you're... That is, um, that is actually more basic in the Docker, right? In Docker, it, so Swarm here is built on Docker, uh, and the health check is built in, inside Docker, actually, not in, not in uh, Swarm mode. Swarm mode basically taking the events from Docker. It's possible, but them thing like how much we want to open up here, I don't know, because it could potentially damage your, your 
services, like it takes forever to upgrade. That was one of the biggest problem in a lot of infrastructure. 